Good afternoon. Thank you for being with us at the Kiev Post. Uh, good, good evening. So that's very interesting. So tell me about Israel. There's, there's obviously a lot of immigrants from the former Soviet space inside of Israel. How does the Israeli average guy on the street, is there a lot of support for Ukraine or is it more favorable to Russia? What, what's the perception of the average person? We did uh, some polls uh, to understand what the position, first of all, of the Israeli uh, Russian speaking uh, population. Uh, and understand what they feel with this uh, uh, war, because they have families also in Ukraine, in Russia. I also have a friend in, uh, friends in uh, Russia and in Ukraine. It's a very difficult uh, situation from the moral and uh, from, uh, I would say, psychological point of view. It, it's very difficult to understand this uh, aggression of Russia, and uh, it's a difficult time for everyone. So we did this uh, polls with uh, some... Uh, uh, specialist in this area, and it's interesting uh, results. Uh, it's around 85% per percent of uh, Russian Israeli speaking uh, population, they support Ukraine in 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that they support, they understand that this is the Russian aggression. There is around 5-7% that they are pro-Russian, it's a um, population of uh, 60 years plus. They don't know Hebrew, uh, a majority of them. They see Russian TV in Israel that it's not forbidden still. So from this point of view, they're like zombie uh, after the Russian propaganda and they support uh, Russians because they see only one uh, side of this uh, tragedy. So from that point of view, they support uh, Russian uh, Russia and Russian aggression and Putin, etc. And there is a very small percentage. They they're uh, in a very difficult psychological uh, situation. They they can't understand what uh, with which side to be. And from this point of view, they uh, so they uh, answer that they don't know. Uh, to whom they give their support. And from this point of view, it's because of a really difficult situ psychological situation. Also, some of them afraid that if they would answer, there will be some problems with their relative in Russia. So from mm -hmm. that point of view, they decide not to take position. So, and on the Israeli side, it's a non-Russian speaking population, there's a, some, uh, of uh, of course, they support uh, uh, majority of Ukraine, but there are also some Israelis that they think that the Ukrainians they were collaborants in the Second World War with Nazis, so they don't have to support them. But these Israeli people uh, forget or they forgot that in the Soviet army, 25, 27 percent were ethnic Ukrainian soldiers. And they liberated also Europe from uh, Nazism. So from that point of view, they don't understand the historic uh, uh, way. Uh, it's weight, it's historical weight, if I can say in this way, and understand the role of Ukrainians in this uh, war. But it's, uh, you know, it's a lack of uh, education. So we can do. Well, let me ask you a different question then. Israel, though, a country that it seems to be from the statistics you've shared with us, has such strong support generally for Ukraine. Uh, why is it that we don't see Israel doing more, for instance, with the with the Iron Dome that could be protecting Ukraine from the missile attacks it's receiving from the aggressor state, from Russia? You know, you're an expert in national security, and you understand that Ukraine is in a terrible situation right now in terms of the attacks on the energy infrastructure. Yeah. Why can't Israel lend a hand to do more? Can Ukraine count on Israel? Yeah, this is a really very complicated uh, answer to this uh, very complicated uh, question. Look, Israel is still in the situation of war. For the last 75, almost 75 years, Israel is in the, in the state of war. And now the main problem, what we have, it's uh, two um, places. One, it's a, a Gaza. Um, District and the second is the northern border with uh, Syria and Lebanon. So, from Israel's strategic point of view, we have a problem with the, our, uh, uh, I will say, with the, our freedom of uh, activity 
in the sky of Syria and Lebanon, and also with the Gaza district. What the problem is? The problem is that from strategic point of view, Israel uh, needs, and it's a real strategic uh, uh, need to, to act uh, in a free way in the sky of Syria against Iranian units, against Hezbollah terroristic units. So from this point of view, we need cooperation of Russia. Why? Because Russia, they have, they has, have uh, a units uh, military units in Syria, and they support uh, Assad regime. So from that point of view, we depend on their cooperation because they have a special uh, systems, S-300 uh, against our uh, air jets. So from that point of view, we need some cooperation of that. That because the Israeli position, it's a very cautious and very problematic from uh, this point of view. So, I mean, I would be curious, though, under the new government, I mean, you've laid out very succinctly why it is that Israel takes the policy that it takes. But under the new government of Netanyahu and Foreign Minister Eli Cohen, do you anticipate Israel's policy towards Ukraine to change or to expand, to shrink? What's going to happen? What's going to uh, It's a good question because, uh, look, Eli Cohen, uh, he is not a professional diplomat. And Eli Cohen, for him, it's a very high position for in the first time in his life. So from this point of view, uh, there, from my, uh, in a, it's my humble opinion, he has a, a lack of uh, experience how to manage all these uh, diplomatic things in a very, very uh, right way. So his first uh, announcement was that we, Israel, in Israel, we have to talk less about Ukraine. And on the other hand, in the same uh, speech, he said, I will have now a phone conversation with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, and I would like to talk to him, etc., without mentioning the Ukrainian uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. And it's a lack of experience and lack of understanding of complicated situation in the, this area, because we have a special uh, relations uh, with Ukraine also. We have a, a big Jewish community in Ukraine. We have a very important for Zionism and for Jewish history places and sites in uh, Ukraine. And from this point of view, he forgot it. Day after this, there was a phone conversation. And look, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Israel published that they have a very good conversation. And Eli Cohen talked about the Jewish community, Russian-speaking Jewish community in Israel, etc. So there's a contradiction. He doesn't understand that the majority of this community supports Ukraine, not Russia. So in, I, I have no explanation. I think a lack of experience, lack of understanding. Maybe he will try... I, I don't know, but uh, from my point of view, it was uh, really un, uh, unprecedented in this situation because this is a real tragedy. This is a real war, and we know what it means war, yes? In Israel, we know this. Everyone knows it. So from this point of view, I'm, uh, I can't explain this. And uh, from my, I, I don't know. I really I don't know. Mr. Ambassador, I appreciate your time today. Thank you for coming to talk to us at the Kiev Post. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.